All right, thanks for the download button on the Steve Austin Show Unleashed podcast. And I have to start by congratulating my longtime friend, one of my closest friends, Diamond Dallas Page. He's now officially going into the WWE Hall of Fame, and it is well-deserved. And it ain't because of his DDP yoga program. It's because of all of his hard-ass work inside the squared circle and all the things he did to get himself ready. But for all of you already doing DDP yoga, I know you're thinking the same thing I am. There should be a yoga hall of fame and DDP should be in that too because DDP yoga has helped thousands of people get on the path to healthier living and stick to it and if living healthy is your goal then take advantage of this special offer and get on board DDP is offering y'all 30% off the DDP Yoga Now app and all DDP Yoga related merch. Just go to ddpyoga.com slash Austin. And the DDP Yoga Now app gives you everything you need to achieve your health and fitness goals. DDP's got tons of workouts, nutrition tips, and recipes, a way to track your progress, and even offers motivation for those days that you need it most. The app also lets you access live workouts from the DDP Yoga Performance Center. And like I said, you can get all of that for 30% off by going to ddpyoga.com slash Austin. The app lets you do DDP Yoga anytime, anywhere. Just open the app on your smartphone or tablet, select a workout, and get to work. So get on the DDP Yoga program today and change your life. Just go to ddpyoga.com slash Austin and take advantage of this huge sale. 30% off the DDP Yoga Now app and all DDP Yoga-related merch. Go to ddpyoga.com slash Austin. That's ddpyoga.com slash Austin. The following program is a podcast1.com production. He started in a small town in Texas. Worked his ass off to become one of the most famous wrestlers of all time. We're going to take care of business tonight, and that's the bottom line. And now he's dominating the world of on-demand audio. And he's doing it for the working man. This is a damn good outlet for me to spew the bullshit off my brain. This is the Steve Austin Show. Unleashed. 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 All right, everybody, welcome to Steve Austin Show. I am coming to you from the main streets of Los Angeles, California today. Come here, Hershey. 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 Come here. Come here. Come here. Hershey the Wonder Dog has stopped to say hello. What's going on, girl? You want to be on the podcast today? Hey. Hershey the Wonder Dog just stopped. I'm in here in my office at uh, Studio 316. Hershey the Wonder Dog stopped to get a couple of pets, so I'm petting her. Hershey, you're breathing too loud. Can you go in the other room when I get through petting you? This is a podcast which has never won an award. Maybe your appearance on the show today will give you an award. Will give me an award. I'm scratching underneath her chin. This is her favorite place. She likes me to scratch. Good, good, Hershey. Later on, I will take you on a W-A-L-K. I cannot say the word because if Mooley hears that word, she will come screaming in here waiting for him to pick up the dog leashes and the shit bags. All right, Hershey goes riding off in the sunset. Hershey, it was good talking to you. Thanks for stopping by the Steve Austin Show. God damn it, I am back from South Texas. And I'll tell you one thing, I had a lot of fun down there. I got my ass kicked by the chigger bugs, but it was good down there catching up work, filling up feeders, and doing all the other cool shit I get to do out there. Feeding the alligator. I posted a video of me throwing a rabbit to alligator. Well, I didn't show the video of the rabbit getting eaten by the alligator but i just showed me visiting with alligator and on my instagram account at steve austin bsr just like my twitter account i think i had about 170,000 downloads or something like that and people uh wonder about that alligator getting that close to that kawasaki mule man uh, alligator ain't gonna jump in a, in a mule uh the alligator's not gonna kick my ass i mean you know, I was completely safe. The alligator was safe. Some people always ask me, hey, man, why don't you shoot that thing? I think it's dangerous. I like the alligator. He ain't dangerous to me. He ain't bothering nothing. That's where he lives. That's his home. He lives over in Tombstone Lake in the middle of my property. 
So it was good catching up with Al. I tried to get him on a podcast, but he had other things to do. So he rejected me. And I got rejected by a couple of people because of their plans to go to WrestleMania. Ended up in them leaving a little bit earlier than I would have liked, thereby negating their appearance on the Steve Austin Show podcast. What the fuck am I, chop liver or what? Anyway, I'm just fucking with you. Y'all have a good time down there in WrestleMania. I got my wife, my illustrious wife, Kristen, to sit in with me because I was in here in my office all damn day long trying to think, what the fuck are you going to do? Are you going to break down that WrestleMania 25 match between The Undertaker and Shawn Michaels? What are you going to talk about? Yeah, y'all sent me some questions. I can answer those, but shit. I was just lacking creative juices. Had a bunch of other shit go on. I got a couple of meetings tomorrow. Uh, the contractors next door was bothering me all day. All kinds of shit was going on. Then I had to get some stuff notarized today and FedEx that shit. Something that should have taken about 20 minutes took an hour and a half. So here I am at the nth hour trying to get this show ready to send to Stacy over the 90210 to put together. And my wife Kristen finally said, finally. I was trying to hint at her all day. I flat out asked her. She turned me down. And then she saw me just wheels turning, wheels turning, frustrated. She said, well, if you bring the microphones in here, I'll help you out a little bit. So me and my wife sat at our little kitchen table there by the window. And I had to crack that window to give us a breeze of fresh air because it's hotter than fuck over in Cali today. A little bit of the old table. And we sit there and shoot the breeze and talk about all the shit we got going on. And with the remodel coming back to Texas, we got a new puppy on the way. And then we bust in some Q&As that uh, you guys sent in. And basically, it's just uh, it's a one-man clusterfuck featuring my wife, Kristen. And I hope you enjoy the show because it's really my life. I may be a global icon and a national treasure, but sometimes shit blows up in my face, and sometimes I ain't got fuck all going on either. And the other time, I just don't know where to shit or wind my watch. Jiminy H. Cricket. You'll hear about that saying in the podcast. Someone sent me an email the other day, said I was saying Jesus Christ too much on the Family Friendly Show. So now it's Jiminy H. Cricket. In today's day and age, with all the PC horse shit, you can't say shit no more without pissing somebody off. I don't know. It just seems like America just... Never mind. I won't go there. I will not go there, but I will go here. I know your brackets are done for March Madness. I know a lot of you guys were out of the money when South Carolina took out Duke. And now with the Final Four coming this weekend and the National Championship game on Monday night, you got to get to BetDSI.com if you want a shot at making any of that money back. You can get on individual games at BetDSI. And they even have live in-game wagering so you can cover losses if you need to. Or add to your winnings if things are heading in that direction. That's the beauty of second half bets. And right now, if you register at BetDSI.com and use my promo code Austin25, that's my last name and the number 25, you'll get $25 for free and a 200% bonus on your first deposit. So, hey, what's better than winning money? Winning on someone else's dime, that's what. And you ain't got to worry about playing at BetDSI. They've been in the business for over 20 years and are the top-rated business on sportsbook review sites. they got great customer service available 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, and they've built their reputation on payment of winnings. And right now, when you register at BetDSI.com and use my promo code AUSTIN25, you'll get 25 bucks for free and a 200% bonus with your first deposit. So get in on this action. Register at BetDSI.com and use my promo code AUSTIN25. That's my last name, Austin, and the number 25 to get $25 for free and a 200% bonus with your first deposit. That's BetDSI.com and use the promo code AUSTIN25. Steve Austin. Steve Austin. Unleashed. Unleashed. All right. Welcome to the podcast. I'm sitting at the table over here at Studio 316. My wife is sitting across the table from me. I've got my laptop computer open. It's Wednesday. This is the Thursday podcast that you're listening to. WrestleMania 33 is in Orlando, Florida, this Sunday, April the 2nd. I will be tuned in, seeing what happens, see who wins, see who loses, and see who sets himself up for a future push. Christian, how do you feel about WrestleMania 33? 
Well, first of all, Steve, you didn't say welcome to the Steve Austin Show. Oh, Kristen, welcome to the Steve Austin Show. How are you? No, you always start off, welcome to the Steve Austin Show. This is the Thursday Unleashed podcast. Yeah, but I'm going to do that on my open. Oh, okay. Which I'm going to record after <laughs> I get finished talking to you. I'm very excited about WrestleMania. I know absolutely nothing about it. And I don't know why people would all flock to, to Orlando, Florida to go watch it. Because it's the biggest show of the year. <laughs> have you seen the stadium that the, the guys and gals going to be working in? No, I haven't. I know it's about eight or 90,000 people, and they've got this crazy setup and the stage or the entrance ramp looks like it's about 150, 200 yards long. It's absolutely spectacular. So this is the biggest wrestling event in the year. I mean, this is what the whole year of wrestling or sports entertainment is geared towards. And this how long is this show supposed to last? Probably going to last about four hours. They're going to do a pre. They're going to do a pre-show. They'll probably last three hours. I mean, I would imagine the thing from bell to bell or all day long. It's going to be eight or ten hours long. Wow. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> really can't hear the enthusiasm. I'd go to a Zumba party for four hours, but I wouldn't go to, to uh... a... <laughs> well, all my buddies are down there. Diamond Dallas Page is going into the Hall of Fame. Of course, you know, when I first moved to Los Angeles, right before I met you, I was living with Diamond Dallas Page. And then when you and I went to the Lost Lonely Boys concert, and I left my keys in my manager's pickup truck, and I tried to get back into Dallas's house. I couldn't get back in because he was sound asleep, and I had to spend a night at your house. So there's some sentimental ties there. <laughs> Man, you still think I was working you. I was drunk out of my gourd. I lost my keys, and then we ended up getting married. So here we are. So there, there, there's a sentimental attachment to WrestleMania right there. <laughs> and then my old travel partner, Rick Rude's going in. Ravishing Rick Rude. God dang. One time I remember we were splitting a room in Philadelphia, and Rick Rude was snoring so goddamn loud. And, and he's a senior guy, so I had to have respect for him. But I would tell him, Rick shut up and he'd be quiet and then he starts snoring i mean it'd be like the drapes are coming off the window rick shut the fuck up and he'd go be quiet for a second and then he'd start snoring again from that day on i mean me and rick are very good friends i had a lot of respect for him but i never ever roomed to rick root again because i can't stand when people snore like a motherfucker like i used to i was just I... gonna say that yeah but i went to <laughs> sleep study and got diagnosed with sleep apnea so now i don't snore no more right yeah but i had about eight miserable years of snoring well, you should totally get a sleep study. But anyway, so my old buddy uh, Ravishing Rick Root is going to the Hall of Fame. That's exciting. And, you know, one of the most exciting things about the Hall of Fame this year is one of my favorite tag teams of all time, the Rock and Roll Express, Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson, are going in the Hall of Fame. And, God damn, I've been saying they need to go in for years and years and years, along with the Midnight Express, uh, who haven't gone in yet. And um, the Fabulous Freebirds final went in a year or two ago. So now that the Rock and Roll is going in, you know, it, it would be neat to go down to Orlando and see it all, but goddamn, we've been so busy going down to the ranch and doing so much work, and I'm excited about all the, the members of the, the Hall of Fame. But going back to you and, I, you and I, God damn, we just got back from the Broken Skull Ranch, went down there for a little bit of spring cleaning, and I got on the damn lawnmower, got all the chigger bugs. I told you that story on the podcast. Get this one. When we came back to L.A. just a few days ago, I was shaving my head because I hadn't shaved in a couple of days because I had so many bumps on my head, I was scared what would happen. Sure enough, man, that damn razor clipped a couple of those damn chigger bumps I had on top of my head. My head, I had about eight patches, little toilet paper patches on my head. I looked like a fucking idiot, and I forgot when I went to Walgreens to pick up a prescription. And I had, I had these eight little toilet paper gimmicks on my head. I won't say it, but you probably look like everybody else that was standing in line for drugs. <laughs> Man, I tell you what, the Walgreens that we live by, there's some sketchy people over there, no yeah. doubt. Because <laughs> they sell at... needles for a very cheap price. so we, I, I, that's... that's just the element that is Venice and Marina Del Rey. There's a lot, a lot of drug addicts over here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I used to do drugs. I still do, but I, I used to, to too. Do. Mitch Hedberg. <laughs> I, well, I cut back on the drug use. Now I just use pharmaceutical drugs that my doctor prescribes me. <laughs> and lots of vitamins. Day. You remind me of my grandfather, Jack LaLanne, with your vitamins. <laughs> my whole wife gets so goddamn mad at me. I take about, I don't know how many fucking vitamins 57 I vitamins. <laughs> <laughs> but they're all good for you. Yeah. <laughs> and and there I was a tra- to change. So. But there was a trade-off. You know, I told that story before. Back when you and I first bought the ranch in 2006, Seven. 
I was there by myself, and I threw my backpack over my shoulder. You know, I was having back in, the, in my wrestling days, you know, those pills that rattled in my backpack would have been Somas, Vicodin, Percocet, Ambien, all kinds of different shit. These days, I mean, you know, that's blood pressure medication, this, that, <laughs> and now it's vitamins. Vitamins. So, Three drawers full but, of vitamins. So, you know, I, I've, I've evolved from being, you know, back in that status into, you know, the new status, and now it's like more vitamins and more vitamins. It seems like when you get older, you get smarter about the drugs you take. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at least if you want to live a long time. True. I mean, I could take a handful of Vicodin or a handful of blood pressure pills. And I take my handful of blood pressure pills because that's what's going to be good for me. And so I'm still taking a lot of shit because the doctor prescribes them to me. You always get mad at me. You say, God damn. And she, my, my wife actually says that, but she'll never say it on the podcast. She goes, God damn, I can't believe you take so many pills. You do. I looked in your drawer. I was trying to put your underwear away today, and I opened it up, and there's like 50,000 vitamins I've never even heard of. Well, well, let me explain myself. I wouldn't try to exaggerate there. I only take two blood pressure medications. And then I take, yeah, but you buy uh, all these special roots and veggie pills and things from the store. Yeah, those are... Uh, Flowers. Th well, those are supplements. <laughs> I get over at Urban Nutrition. Okay. So it's a bodybuilding uh, supplement store. So a power left or whatever, you ever get all your vitamins, protein powder. Just got back today. I had to drink a uh, speed stack to get the energy to do today's show because I didn't have shit to talk about. I was sitting up, well, I had two guys tap out on me because they ended up going to WrestleMania. So I got fucked without a guest. And so I'm sitting there, sitting there, sitting here. Sitting and we're in there, this, sitting there. No, but check it out. We're, we're in this little crib, and they're re remodeling the house next door. And I was sitting over in my little, this one room that I designated as my office. And I got so much shit piled in there. I can't have the windows open because everybody's got the yard guy coming today, including us. Or contractors or construction or what have Yeah, you. and I'm just sweating my ass off. <laughs> and I, I got up, went to uh, use the bathroom, get ready to do my podcast, just come up with something. Make chicken salad out of chicken shit. And right when I was about to sit down, get my pillow out, put on my lap, put my laptop computer on my lap, turn everything on, my wife says... There's a big old fly in here. Would you come get him out for me? Because my <laughs> wife is going to take a nap. And I'm like, motherfucker. It was a big fly. It was a big ass fly. <laughs> so I go in there to the kitchen. I grab the fly swatter. I walk back into the bedroom. Our master bedroom is what we call it. And then I get the fly swatter. And all of a sudden, there goes the fly. And he goes right into my office. I said, okay. I just shut the door and trapped him in there. I said, don't worry about the fly. He's in my office, so forget about it. I came in here and made me a protein shake with the shit that I just bought at the vitamin store, along with all my vitamins. <laughs> so I go back in there. I sit down. I turn on my computer, turn everything on, get ready to start recording. That big fucking fly starts flying all <laughs> over the, the room. So I fucking ribbed myself by trapping a fly in my room. He couldn't get out. And he's loud. Yeah, that son bitch was loud as fuck. Loud so as Hershey's um, toenails on the Hershey's floor here. Hershey's one of those walking by right now. <laughs> So I go in there, get the goddamn fly swatter. I missed him twice, and then I crushed him with a fucking forehand. Knocked him on the ground, and then I hit his ass one more time just to make sure he was dead. I didn't yeah. want to stun him. I didn't want to knock his ass out. I wanted his ass dead so I could start the podcast. And I know I'm not going to win a fucking award for this thing, but it's a podcast nonetheless. But speaking of the fly swatter, so... Because we've had so much rain here, for some reason, I'm not sure what those bugs are called, but they look like giant mosquitoes. We had 37, 37 of those in the house from last night to this morning. They are gigantic looking sort of like mosquito flies. I don't know what they are. They're, they look just like a mosquito, but they're size of a quarter. It's bigger than a quarter. Okay, 50 have, cent piece. Yes. So anyway, my, sure enough, there we were getting ready to go to sleep last <laughs> night. My wife was Steve. Steve, there's six, seven, eight, nine <laughs> of those big mosquito things in here. And she's like, I don't give a shit about them. They're not, gonna, they're not like, I mean, they look like mosquitoes. They look like giant mosquitoes that have been on the gas. But I and want that carcass sitting on me at night. Well, I know, but it's not like they sting you and they suck your blood like a mosquito. They just look like a mosquito and they buzz around, so they bother you. So they don't bother me, so I don't give a shit. But since, since my wife's belly aching and complaining and asked me to kill the goddamn mosquito looks like, if y'all know what these big mosquito things are, please send me an email at questions at steveaustinshow.com and smarten the brother up to what the fuck they are. So anyway, I go get the fly swatter and I have to get a couple of paper towels because these things are so goddamn big. If you don't pick them up off the floor, I mean, you can see a big-ass bug on the floor. So 
Uh, there I am. It's damn dark. It's, it's dark 30. It's time to go to bed. I'm ready to go to bed. It's been a tough day. I had a badass back workout. But my damn wife says, can you kill these seven, eight, nine mosquito gimmicks? So there I am, husband of the year, swatting these motherfuckers down and picking their carcasses. By the time I finish picking up all the carcasses, <laughs> they weighed about a pound. I'm telling you, those suckers are big. What are you up, looking up on your iPhone to I see am, what they are? Because I did see somebody talking about them on our little um, local newsletter here. And see, when we first came over to this house, there's this little mosquito sprayer in the backyard, and it's hooked to a propane tank, and it looked like an outboard motor, actually. It was a little mos- yeah. mosquito sprayer. Yeah. And so I picked the son bitch up and threw it in the trash because it ain't been used in 10 years, but I don't know, because when we're over there at 316 Gimmick Street, we ain't got all those things. We got a couple of them, but not like we got over here. I think his house is, uh, something's wrong with it. It's a mosquito attracting it. They're just, they're just everywhere here. I don't know well, what it is. Also because we have more grass over here. Because in, the, in uh, our backyard, we have that swimming pool, and it's all cement. And we have fruit trees over here. That's right. There's a, yeah. Maybe they're, they're like fruit suckers or something. I want to know what's eating the oranges that are falling in the backyard. Hey, knock it off, Mula. There's nobody breaking into the perimeter. I got it all cased out. Well, I saw like at least six squirrels out there, and I'm sure there's some other rodents. God damn, I was out there picking up the dog shit, and I just used that damn scoop just to pick up the, the oranges that are half eaten. I don't know what the, what's eating those things, but they're getting plenty of vitamin C. <laughs> I know we got a possum back there. Yes. Because Mula hates that possum. There's a couple of rats back there, but there's got to be some other rodents out there. They're the squirrels. They're a lot of, they're like gigantic squirrels. They're not just small little squirrels. Oh, man, here's the thing. I was sick and tired. I train over there in my garage at 316. And I brought some dumbbells back from Texas, and I set them back up in my backyard. There's a canopy back here. And I was out there working out yesterday, training back. And this squirrel didn't know that I was back there because they're used to having to run, their run of the backyard. All of a sudden, I got these dumbbells in my hand. I hear this rattling, this commotion. <laughs> I didn't know what the fuck was going on. And sure enough, this squirrel was looking at me. Damn near did a backflip because I startled the shit out of him, and he hauled ass. So... I've got all of the, after not having any nature around, being here in Los Angeles in the concrete jungle, now I'm out there with my friends, the squirrels, the opossums, (laughs) the rats and the mice and all the big ass mosquitoes. I got training partners finally. (laughs) I was going to ask that squirrel, hey brother, give me a spot. I'm lifting some heavy dumbbells over here. (laughs) Okay, let's take a pause here to thank one of the sponsors who makes it possible for me to do this podcast twice a week for free. So swig of water for Topps trading cards. You remember those? Do you remember collecting Topps cards when you were a kid? Well, through their Topps Now program, Topps has limited edition cards for WrestleMania. The Topps new Countdown to WrestleMania 33 match sets celebrates the biggest night in sports entertainment with trading cards commemorating the biggest matches from WrestleMania 33 and NXT TakeOver Orlando. These sets are only available for a limited time, so go to tops.com. That's T O P P S.com to pick up yours now. Tops now, your hero, your team, your moment. Visit tops.com for more information. Hey everyone, this is Sean Wheelock inviting you to check out our new MMA podcast, Sean Funky and the Baddest Man, right here on Podcast One. Every week I'll be with welterweight titleist Ben Funky Askren and the baddest man on the planet, Joe Warren, to take you inside the sport of MMA. So join us every Wednesday for all new episodes of Sean Funky and the Baddest Man. Download and listen at PodcastOne.com, the Podcast One app, and subscribe on iTunes. This is Steve Austin Unleashed. Hey, i got to get your comments. When I was mowing the yard the other day at the Brothers Co. Ranch, and I was on a riding lawnmower, and that wind was blowing all that grass back on me, and I thought I was just going to be cool, I was going to be badass, and, you know, the chigger bugs weren't going to bother me. When, I, when you could see my shoulders, I counted. I had about 40 chigger bumps on each deltoid. It looked like chicken pox, yeah. I mean, it looked like chicken pox on steroids. <laughs> I mean, that's how bad it looked. I looked like I mean, the, the bumps were badass. But like, like today, or the other day when I was shaving, and, and I started shaving the tops of them off, that's when it got to be just a little Well, much. I was kind of embarrassed because you had a sleeveless shirt on, and I'm like, are you actually going to go to the store like that? Well, also, we were, we were driving. Hey, shut up. 
trying to do an award-winning podcast, Hershey. We were uh, about to get on this uh, charter airplane that we chartered going back from uh, Texas to Los Angeles. And I had a sleeveless dry fit shirt on and my camouflage shorts. It's what I wear every single day of my life. And I also had a regular shirt with sleeves. It was dry fit. And we were in the car. We were getting ready to take our bags inside the airport. And Chris says, would you mind putting on the other shirt? <laughs> <laughs> like, why? You don't want me to show these jacks off? No, because I look so fucking stupid because I had all the bumps on my shoulders. I had them all over my neck. I had to explain to people what the bumps were when we came back to California because everybody's looking at my neck. You know when you're talking to people yeah. and you see their eyes looking at another space? <laughs> They're not looking at your eyes. They're yeah. looking at the zip on your forehead. These people were looking at my neck. I'm like, I have to explain. And no one had a clue what they were. Well, and the thing about it was, you wasn't even the outdoors. I mean, we walked outside. Well, check us out. We would walk outside, but I, I swear to God, when you were wiping me down with alcohol at one time, all the chigger bugs jumped off me and got on your neck. <laughs> and then we're riding the Kawasaki mule around, and because there's been so much rain down there, and when you're driving down the roads in the, in the Kawasaki mule, the grass gets kicked up on the front bumper well, of the mule. Well, nothing's touched it for a long time. Oh, I know. So they're just waiting to jump off of there. So they all jumped off, and they get kicked back on, under our ears and our neck and shit like yeah. that because you weren't out there walking around in grass. No, and then I put my hood over my head. Ted's looking at me like I'm a freak because I don't want bugs all over me. <laughs> Man, we were riding Ted's around. Ted's a tough guy with mosquitoes and chiggers all over him, and I'm in the back seat covered in my damn sweatshirt. What's the first thing Ted did when you saw him? Uh, well, he gave you a hug, said hello. Yeah. Oh, he showed me his arm scar. Let me hit the pause button for a second. All right, Kristen, where were we? I had to hit the pause button because I was getting a telephone call coming in. Luckily, I had my phone set to silence. So I don't owe anybody any beer at this point in time. But when I hit the pause button, all of a sudden your phone rang, and our interior designer came over to the remodel, so you just left the room for 30 minutes. I was on a roll. You were on a roll. I don't know if I can get back on a roll. So what the fuck happened? We're on anyway, a roll. Teddy showed you his <laughs> elbow. Big-ass scar. Teddy, congratulations. I'm glad you're on the mend. Jesus Christ. He's back to work. Officially. Back to work? Yeah. Working man down there. Hiring giraffe pussy. Ted Fowler Construction back in action. How's the house looking over there? And what did uh, our illustrious interior designer say? Well, after we've done all this work, you and I came in the house the other day, remember, and we looked at the fireplace and we said, geez, the fireplace kind of looks out of place now. <laughs> We had the fireplace replaced with uh, it stack replaced. Stone. We did some stack stone on there, dry stack stone. And then when we come back with the new floors we got coming in and all the cabinets and fixtures and stuff, it looked like shit. It looked like an albatross in the middle of the room. <laughs> yeah, it just didn't fit the whole theme of the house. And we actually have a theme to the house now with this interior designer. So me and Chris and looked at each other after being dead dog tired and beat up by chigger bugs. <laughs> God damn, that fireplace looks like shit. <laughs> so we told Randy, our what's he contractor, our contractor, Randy, tear that fucking fireplace. Demo down. the fireplace. We're starting from scratch. So now the in, officially the entire house has been changed. Well, like I said, we should have built a new house from scratch. <laughs> God damn it. Hey man, what was I fixing to talk about? Um. Oh, man, I got a phone call from the guy trying to oh, transport yeah. <laughs> my Kawasaki mule. That's why I had the pause button to begin with. Dude called me yesterday, asked me, how do you get to the Broken Skull Ranch? I gave him directions. Well, I hadn't heard from a guy all day long. And then last night, about 10 p.m., my phone starts ringing. It's the guy that's supposed to be transporting Buck the mule out here to the Broken Skull Challenge compound. He don't know where the damn... Uh, ranches and then he finally ends up at a gate and he says hey steve the gate code you left me doesn't work for the lock and i said dude what does the gate look like and he says it says donnell on it i said that ain't my gate my <laughs> gate's four miles down the road and it was 10 p.m in texas it's black as fuck out there when it gets dark out there in south texas it gets dark i said man I said, I don't know what you're going to do. I said, my <laughs> gate's about four miles down the road. You got the correct gate code. You don't have the right gate. 
<laughs> this motherfucker ends up sleeping on the side of the road. Well, you know, he's got a sleeper cab in that 18 wheeler. Oh, okay. And I'm bringing Buck the mule back to California to bring it back to the Broken Skull Challenge compound. That's my California mule. I got my other two Kawasaki mule, Pro FX and FXT, down there at the ranch. Buck is in California. I had UVC Power Sports customize him and trick him out. No, now Buck it's time was to... in Texas. Now he's coming to California. Yeah, so, you yeah. know, I'm bringing him back to California. I originally had him shipped down to Houston. So anyway, the dude just called me, and he goes, Steve, he goes, I had to get the uh, sheriff in McMullen <laughs> County to show me where your ranch was. And I said, dude, Wait a minute, you have to backtrack because you got a call at 8 o'clock this morning. Oh, yeah, I got a call from 8 o'clock this morning from dispatch. And the lady says, can you give directions one more time to the driver? And I said, yeah. And she said, okay, he'll call you right back. And the son bitch didn't call back the whole day until just right now when he was trying to record the podcast. And it's 6 o'clock in Texas. Yeah, it's 6 o'clock in Texas. It's 4 here. I'm way behind on trying to turn this podcast in to Stacy in the 90210. So anyway, I said, were you able to get my mule and put it on your truck? And he goes, yes. And he goes, but there's some things in the back of the bed. You know, the things that are on the deer heads. <laughs> You mean those horns? <laughs> Technically, as you know, if you listen to the show, they're antlers, but we call them horns. I said, you mean those horns? He goes, yeah, the horns. He goes, I can't have anything in the back, so I took those out. I said, that's fine. Just bring, <laughs> I, I didn't say this to him. I, I was very, very polite to him. And I was like, just bring my motherfucking mule back to the Broken Skull <laughs> Chalice Compound so I got something to ride in California. <gasps> anyway, I don't know when he's going to get here. And he goes... Are you, you're Steve Austin, right? I said, yep, that's me. He goes, well, I didn't know I was hauling your mule. I goes, I got to take a picture with you. Is that okay? I said, as long as you bring my motherfucking mule, I'll take a bunch. I'm going to make a movie together. <laughs> It'll be the, the, the movie of the happy Kawasaki mule owner receiving Buck the Mule in California, the Brothers Go Challenge compound, starring Steve Austin. <laughs> <laughs> Super nice guy. The dude slept on the side of the road in his sleeper cab in his 18-wheeler because oh it was too dark to find a goddamn yeah. gate. God damn. Son of a bitch. It's, you can get lost out there, especially going to, to, to our place. You can because, get lost in the daylight out there. Yeah, it's in the middle of nowhere. BFE, as we like to call it. But it's good out there because you ain't by no traffic. Ain't no poaching. Ain't no people. Ain't shit. Nothing. God damn it. I'm no grocery stores in there. <laughs> <laughs> we got a bunch of chigger bugs out there, and we got some big-ass deer. <laughs> hey, Ted, congratulations on getting your arm fixed. God damn it, it's good to see that son of a bitch. He's moving his arm good again. Yeah, and I haven't seen him in a while. Yeah, he haven't seen him in a while, but now, fuck, he's getting the feelings back in his fingers, so now he'd be back to signing autographs. <laughs> <laughs> well, he did bring you something cool. What? That nice flag that that gentleman made for you. Oh, yeah, man. I got to give that dude a shout out from North Carolina. Some guy works in a paint and body shop, made me an American flag and had BSR uh, in it, red, white, and blue. And it kind of tattered like it had been kind of war torn, but it was made out of metal and he painted it. And it was awesome. I didn't bring it back. I had it on top of the suitcase. Yeah. So when I go back uh, here pretty quickly, I'll bring it back. But uh, I forgot your dude's, I forgot your name, but thank you very much. You took a picture of his address, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna take a. Uh, I'm gonna send him something. Oh, good. What else do you want to talk about today? Well, I was just reading about a great white shark swimming in the beach of Manhattan Beach. A great white shark swimming in Manhattan Beach. To you people that are listening overseas in the United Kingdom and all those other places that listen to the show, Manhattan Beach is about ten miles from Marina Del Rey. So what you're saying is people are actually at the beach swimming in that water today while they're filming a great white shark see, swimming I, to the. When you first gave me that there. news, I was going to jump in my Bronco and Hershey the Wonder Dog go down there and, and whoop that damn shark's ass so nobody had to lose a limb, lose an arm, leg, die. And see, and Chris thought, you know, this would be great. You wanted to go down to Orlando and see WrestleMania 33, and, you know, I wasn't going to participate. I wasn't going to wrestle. I'm officially retired. But if there's a great white shark and he's out here about to harm some human being, and he's in the Pacific Coast, this is my territory. He done lost his Los Angeles privileges. 
I want you, Great White Shark. I want you in the worst way possible. I will see you in Orlando at WrestleMania 33. I have not called Vince McMahon. I have not called Triple H. I have not called anybody with any authority from the World Wrestling Entertainment Company. But there's no way, no way that this match should be off of that card. Dare, dare I say even main event this motherfucker. It could be epic. There are going to be 80 some odd thousand people there. There could be more if they announce this is a special attraction. They could put in an extra damn uh, section of stadiums. 150,000 people there, Chris. I might be in Orlando. Stone Cold Steve Austin versus the Great White Shark. I'm just not sure how he's going to get there. Right, that's one thing. I can get on a private jet and fly down there. This motherfucker going to need some water. So it's probably, you know what, we'll film it via satellite. We'll film it in Manhattan oh, Beach yeah. live. Yeah, there you go. Satellite it. We can put you on one of those shark cages. I ain't any, <laughs> shark cages are for sissies. I ain't no damn sissy. If I'm going out there with the, if I'm going to fight that shark, I'm going to go out there with a the T-bone steak right here on my top of my head. Bring it, motherfucker. All you have to do is go shave your head and enough. God damn, you're talking about blood in the water. But all I do is bust out them little toilet paper patches. That wouldn't look good for my promo reel. No. <laughs> God damn it. There was something else I was going to talk about, and I can't remember what I was going to talk about. Well, I know they recently order, opened up a Los Poyos Hermanos here in California. And for you Breaking Bad uh, fans like we are, Los Poyos Hermanos was the f- franchise at Gus Fring. Yes. A Breaking Bad. And they're giving away free curly, f- cur- free curly fries That's and water. That's easy for you say. <laughs> <laughs> for f- f- free. I always get excited when that word comes up. <laughs> for f- free. <laughs> It reminds me that, I mean, I've been telling you people, I told you on the last podcast, you got to watch Southpaw Regional Wrestling because everybody's performances are so epic on there. But one of the most uh, favorite parts of it for me is Ric Flair doing the uh, uh, fried chicken advertisement commercials. Woo, crispy. Woo, tangy. you got to hear Ric Flair do it. I ain't going to worth this shit. But anyway, so, yeah, way to go, Ric Flair. What else was it we were going to talk about? I don't know. Were you going to take questions today? At Steve I was Austin? going to take a few questions, <laughs> but I keep getting the same goddamn questions. The questions at steveaustinshow.com, so I don't know if I can do any questions. There's some other shit I was going to talk about because I was driving in traffic the other day. I recorded a family-friendly podcast because I was running some errands went to visit a friend of mine downtown. And I said, you know what? I'll just take my microphone and record while I'm in Los Angeles traffic. And it's getting close to Tuesday. I need a family-friendly show, so I'll just drive through L.A. traffic and talk while I navigate driving through the streets of Los Angeles. It was amazing, Kristen. I talked for an hour without saying one single cuss word because I knew I couldn't cuss. In the car while you were driving in L.A.? Yes. That's unbelievable. (laughs) And I would think that uh, I think my blood pressure stayed low, didn't get all jacked up driving the streets of Los Angeles. It was epic. Well, so, would, maybe we should take your blood pressure now. Well, I almost did that because, you know, <laughs> when I had to push the pause button, when the guy called to deliver Buck the Mule and you had to go see the interior designer and then you're talking over for 30 minutes, I'm on a roll. I'm chomping at a bit to get this damn show done. So I thought my blood pressure might have went up. And well, I think I, I forgot to take my blood pressure medication <laughs> this morning because I took my other 50 pills. You probably forgot to take your alpha brain to remind you to take your blood pressure medication. No, I did. I did forget <laughs> to take my alpha brain this morning. I had it set out on the counter. And then I came back this morning and I said, man, I feel kind of stupid. Did I take my alpha brain? And I, Because I don't feel like I did. And sure enough, there it was on the side of the counter. I'd forgotten to take it. I did see that pill out there. A lot of, yeah, that was, one, that was my alpha brain. Sometimes i got to take an alpha brain to remember to take the next alpha brain. <laughs> so I took it. And now, like, E equals MC squared like a motherfucker. Yeah, you're on fire. Hey, oh, I'm on fire. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I've been over. I had two... I had two guests tap out on me today, so this hasn't been my day, Kristen, but right now I want to take a pause for the cause, for the words from the sponsors to keep this show on the air for free twice a week. For, 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 for free. We're going to continue on here after I give you reason number 536, why my wife loves Blue Apron, because they have vegetarian and vegan options. She's getting ready to make herself a spinach and fresh mozzarella pizza with olives, bell peppers, and ricotta salada. And thanks to Blue Apron, she's going to be eating that delicious home-cooked pizza in less than 40 minutes. My wife also loves the fact that Blue Apron gets delivered right to our front door and that all the ingredients are fresh and measured out in perfect proportions. And Blue Apron is easy to use. 
Every meal comes with step-by-step, easy-to-follow recipe cards, and like I already said, can be made in 40 minutes or less. This is idiot-proof cooking, people, and I'm telling you, a few Blue Apron meals under your belt, and you will be a gourmet chef. You can choose your meals each week and your delivery options. There's no weekly commitment, so you only get deliveries when you want them. And Blue Apron uses only fresh, high-quality ingredients in all their recipes. And believe me, my wife would not be cooking up these Blue Apron meals if the ingredients weren't up to her high standards. You can see this week's full menu options and get your first three meals free with free shipping at blueapron.com slash unleashed. You'll love how good the food tastes and how easy it is to make home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So get on it. Go to blueapron.com slash unleashed. That's blueapron.com slash unleashed. If you're in the market for a car, then you need to check out TrueCar.com and the TrueCar app. TrueCar gives you the pricing information you need to feel confident about your purchase. When you register a TrueCar, you'll see what other people in your local market paid for the car you want. From there, you can connect with a local TrueCar certified dealer and enjoy a more confident car buying experience. TrueCar shows you real pricing on actual inventory, so you see competitive pricing offered to you by TrueCar certified dealers for vehicles that are actually on their lots. True Car makes car buying easy. No matter if you're looking for a brand new car or used vehicle, there are over 500,000 pre owned vehicles available from True Car certified dealers nationwide. And there are over 13,000 True Car certified dealers. And over 2 million cars have been sold to True Car users by the True Car certified dealer network. True Car users save an average of over $3,000 off MSRP. So when you're ready to buy a new or used car, visit TrueCar.com or download the True Car app to enjoy a better car buying experience. Some features not available in all states. This, this is Steve Austin, Unleashed. All right, everybody, welcome back to part two of the podcast. And here's my luscious wife, Kristen, over here at the 40 by 40 inch square table over here by the damn window. I got the window open so a breeze can come through here. Hotter than fucking the marina today. It's not hot. It's like 70 degrees. It's hot to me. I'm okay. over here sweating my ass off. I got a podcast turned in. Fuck, I ain't got no content. I ain't got shit. And you think Texas is hot? It's like 95 degrees there. Yeah, I mean, shit, all my guests tapped out. <laughs> what the fuck am I, chopped liver over here or what? <laughs> Jesus, H. Christ on a popsicle stick. Hey, man, the other day on the podcast, I said Jesus Christ about three times. Dude emailed me and said, hey, man. You said Jesus Christ three times on the Family Friendly Podcast. That's taking the Lord's name in vain. I can't believe you did that. I emailed the guy back. I said, what the fuck are you talking about? I said, I said Jesus Christ. I said, I didn't use his name in vain. Is that blasphemy, Kristen? Help me, help me out. Well, I've heard it is, but... Just by saying Jesus Christ? Yeah. I'm mentioning his name. Yeah, but you were saying it as more of like an expletive, maybe. No, I don't say Jesus Christ. I'm saying Jesus Christ. Well, just say Jesus Louise, okay? Can I say Jiminy H. Cricket on a popsicle stick? That's better. Okay, Jiminy H. Cricket on a popsicle stick. <laughs> now, this, is a, this is the Unleashed show, so it doesn't make a shit. So I can say Jesus Christ if I want to. I mean, see, because technically, like I said, Jesus fucking Christ. That's what a lot of people say. Now, I'm not going to. And I'm not trying to be offensive to anybody that's very, very religious listening to Joe. Just say Jeez Louise. Jeez Louise. There you go. That sounds so stupid. <laughs> that just ain't something I'd say. Well, that's what I say. Okay, well, I will stop saying Jesus Christ then. Yes, good idea. Yeah, Jim and he hates cricket on a popsicle stick. The things <laughs> you can't say anymore because, you know... <laughs> Everything's so goddamn PC these days. Christmas just tears my ass apart. Everything. You can't <laughs> say nothing. Even on Unleashed Podcasts. Because no. everybody gets out in an uproar. You have to walk a very fine line. you talk about walking a fine line. That's I might why as I well be one of the flying well in this walking tight ropes. <laughs> America. I, I love about the world because I don't live anywhere else in the world but America. God damn. You talking about people There you to... go. You said it again. God's name in vain. Let's just go on to the first question. God. <laughs> nice. Don't even give me the guilt trip by saying God damn. I don't think you're supposed to say that either. <laughs> well, no, you ain't supposed to say it, but everybody does. Not everybody. <laughs> but I hang out with does. I don't say it. Jim and he hates cricket <laughs> on a popsicle stick. Well, I tell you what, my wife... 
Got some pictures the other day from my insurance lady. Pictures of a god dang... I was going to say it, but I didn't because I didn't want to offend you. My lovely wife smiling across the table with little glasses on. <laughs> Someone sent a picture, our insurance lady, of a god dang black lab puppy. Some bitch is about four weeks old at the time. And my wife jams me up. She says, you know, it's been a while since we had to put Shona down. Yep. God rest her soul. We loved her. And uh, we've been down to two dogs. Two dogs is very easy to travel with. But we miss the presence of that third dog. And her, she's starting to get older now. And she's about 12 and a half, going on 13 this year. And she's uh, doing pretty good from her battle with pneumonia. She's still on medication, right? Yep. And so, you know, if if Hershey, God, I don't know if she'll make another year and a half. We'd like for Hershey to be around to kind of teach the new pup some of her traits. Right. Just like she did Mula. Yep. Because Mula is part like Hershey, part like Shona, and she's got her own unique personality. So it's that mentor kind of thing. So we're thinking about getting a black lab puppy. And Mula really wants somebody to play with. But here's the thing. Mula is such an, an attention dog. I mean, you know, if you're standing, if you're sitting somewhere, like at this table, if I'm eating, she'll come over here and she'll just walk in circles. And I'll scratch her back from head to her butt, from head to her butt, because she'll just walk in circles or walk back and forth. She's got me trained. Yeah, but if she's got a puppy, she'll probably play with the puppy instead of pay attention to you. Well, I know, but that, that's my point. She's so used to getting all the attention. It's like, will she be mad at the little black lab puppy? I think initially she will be a little upset because, you know, she won't know what to do. But Well, I, and that's what happened when we got Mula. Yeah. Because Hershey and Shona kayfabe the yeah. shit out of her for about <laughs> two months. Yeah, they didn't want to see. They didn't want to play with her. They ignored her. Poor they, thing. They, because it was a, a two-dog pack. Yeah. And then finally, Mula was accepted. And boy, then it went gangbusters. And then Hershey and Mula turned out to be best friends. And Shona and Mula actually got in a couple of fights over some food. And then one time, Mula was playing too hard, and Shona nipped her. And <laughs> Mula never forgot about that. Yes. But in those did. two scraps they got into, those they didn't last very long. But I'll tell you what, I thought Mula, we, we hate to see our dogs fight. We hate to see any dogs fight. Well, there was just two fights, and it was brutal. Any dog fight's going to be brutal. I know, but it was, over, it was over food. One little kibble of food fell on the ground between them, yep. And goddamn, I'll tell you what, sorry about that. You have to unleash <laughs> you, and I apologize for cussing. <laughs> Shit, I'm sorry. Uh, fuck, I'm sorry. No, when that fight broke out, I couldn't believe Mula's temper. Because Shona outweighed her two, two and a half to one right. on body weight. And that little ass Mula, as timid and meek as she is, holy smoke, she's a ball of fire. She had that fear in her that made her more aggressive, I think. You know, her, she's never been a barker. She will she will bark. But Mula, boy, she sounds like a siren when she barks. If yeah. there's some stranger walking by, if she sees it in the window or hears a strange noise, yeah. I mean, she's a great watchdog. Yes, she is. But it's like, Uncle Mula, shut the <laughs> fuck up. I'm sorry for cussing. Uh, <laughs> but but she's a, she turned out to be a great dog. And I think, you know, Shona was very intuitive. Like if I was sick or wasn't feeling good, Shona would stay up with me. You'd be sleeping yeah. your, and your head <laughs> off in bed, and, and Shona would just sit up and just watch me and make sure I was okay. Her, she is the total companion dog. Nothing phases her. You can take her out in front of a million people or be on an airplane, and she's just calm, cool, and collected. There's a leash law in Los Angeles, but if she's, if she's not on a leash, she will just stay right there and just lay by you. And then Mula, I think probably IQ-wise, she's the smartest dog. Yeah, she's very smart. Smart as a whip, figures everything out, yeah. and she's the master manipulator. Yes. Especially when she uses her eyes. Yeah, she what does. What does she do? Well, there'll be like a ball underneath the sofa, and <laughs> she'll, she'll stand next to the sofa, but she'll use her eyes to kind of direct your eyes towards the sofa, so you'll like get the ball that's underneath the sofa. Or if it's, it's anything, she like if we have one of her toys on the counter, she'll look at the toy, and when you look when you look at her, she'll look at you and look at the toy. She'll she'll like <laughs> get your eyes, and then she'll look to the toy. She like, uses there her it eyes is. like it's, a pointer stick. <laughs> yeah. So I think she's the smartest dog we've got. But here's my thing: Are we ready for another dog? Because it sure is easy traveling with two. It is, but I'm ready for a new pup. So you're going to be the one that stays up in transit and yes. does all that stuff. All you have to do is sleep. 
Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, there's nothing being the head of the house all over because all I do is fuck off and sleep. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be getting up every two hours to teach the dog to go out to the bathroom outside. But the good thing is we're at 317 Gimmick Street, and it's okay if the doggy has a little accident here on these old wood floors. No, it ain't okay. <laughs> I, just because it's a puppy, I don't want to piss and shit in everywhere. Oh, but I, that goes with the territory. I get it. Yeah. But you ain't got to call me out on a worldwide audience for being lazy <laughs> and like I don't do a goddamn thing around here. Well, so we're going to go out on Friday if you're available to pick up our new pup. I think I'm available. I got to call my agent. <laughs> <laughs> I could have an important meeting with Steven Spielberg or George Lucas. <sighs> God damn it. Uh, what was some of the things you had written down there? Uh, you were just on the phone with my brother talking about a silent auction. <laughs> oh, God damn. My brother in law went to a silent auction. I said, man, you better take a hearing aid because you ain't going to hear that goddamn thing. <laughs> All his buddies went home with a bunch of cool shit. He didn't come home with nothing because he couldn't hear the auctioneer up here. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm bummed. <laughs> Goddamn, I sold that son bitch one of my uh, one of my buggies, and it was broken. And we took that thing to the shop down there in South Texas, and they had allegedly fixed it. And then it they started running like shit again. I put a fuel pump on it. Then they came out to the ranch and allegedly fixed it again. Well, hell, in the meantime, I sold my brother-in-law that buggy. And he just took it to the shop and had it fixed properly over there. Well, and he's been, he works on these things, so he ha- happened to be able to fix it as well. So. Yeah, but God damn it. I got an $1,800 bill out of some uh, repair shop, and they didn't fix the goddamn thing. Right. So I got to put a call in and see about selling the score here because I only pay $1,800 for something to get fixed. And then my brother's driving around your <laughs> buggy around with no problems now. <laughs> yeah, but now I'm riding 100% Kawasaki, so yeah. I'm in a good place. Yeah. Uh, good luck with that son, bitch. Jesus. Uh, there said you it. go. I didn't say it. Okay. I just said Jesus. Okay. Because, I mean, Jesus could be anybody. Jeez Louise. Jeez. I'm going to say J-E-E-Z. All right. Well, go ahead. You were going to take some questions today, Steve. I got a question. Somebody sent me here the damn... Uh, Questions at steveaustinshow.com. Says, hey, Steve, I love your show, especially love the shows you do from Broken Skull Ranch with Teddy during hunting season. Well, I tried to do one with his ass the other day, but he got too busy doing his work. Anyway, he says, my question is, how many sheds do you usually find in a good day at the ranch? Also, do you have any good tips or methods you use to help you find more sheds and make better use of your time in the field searching? Thanks a lot. That comes from Ryan in Boonville, Indiana. Well, first of all, how many sheds do you usually find in a good day? God dang. Well, this year we didn't find This any. year sucked. Yeah. We was out there. I thought it was going to be prime time. Uh, I thought all the deer had already dropped their horns, but there's a lot of bucks out there still with horns on their head. We went to a couple of the feeders. That's my, my honey hole is always go to the feeders first. Go to the feeders or the water trough. And uh, God damn, we found a couple of uh, good horns, but we only found... That that first day we might have found five total horns, not 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 match sets, just five horns. The next day we found about one or two, and then the whole other time we were there, about yeah. another one or two. Yeah. So on a good day, shit, I think we found probably as many as ten. Yeah. So it was the shits this year. The grass was tall, and I think we might have been a little bit early. And so as far as tips to find more sheds and make better use of your time. Man, I like to drive my mule slow and just get on a, uh, like a food plot or something like that. Like you're mowing the lawn. I was like not, a mowing the lawn, yeah. just comb back and forth, and I'm just looking for those horns to stick up, just those tips, or it might be reversed, and just look for that dome. But the best time is kind of like when the sun's coming up or, or good midday or right there, you know, about evening when that sun's still high in the sky so you can catch him horns kind of glistening because that one time we went it was getting kind of dark 30 yeah because you don't really see the, the white in those horns get caught by the sun so it's hard to see them i couldn't see because there's too many damn mosquitoes <laughs> god damn the no see down there were a motherfucker this year the what no see those bugs that you can't see oh. that were getting in our eyes and we were breathing no-seams. them. called no see I never heard of that. Yeah, no see Look it up. Okay. I mean, it's like it's like a gnat. Yeah. So it's just like a pack of gnats because you don't really see them. They just, all of a sudden, you're riding your mule. They're everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. But goddamn, those things are bad. It's like you got to wear a, a mask or something. you got to wear some protective goggles. Yeah. 
I always, here, here's a safety tip for you. God name you thinking, of all the places Steve's talking about picking up shed horns, no CMs and Nats, he's going to give you a safety tip. If you're driving a motorcycle or a four-wheeler or a UTV, always have some type of eye protection on. You can wear a helmet if you want to. I don't wear a helmet because I'm always driving slow. But the other day, me and Kristen were driving. I told you that bug hit me right in the goddamn eye, <laughs> right underneath my glasses, yeah. on my cheekbone. I swear to God, that bug weighed about two pounds. <laughs> Remember? Well, when you're driving, you know, 30 miles per hour. Too. Yeah, you're yeah. going 30, and their bugs were going 10, 15, 20, in or the whatever direction. Yeah, but man, if if I uh, if I hadn't been wearing my glasses, I'd be wearing an eye patch right now. <laughs> And so when nighttime comes, I always have my clear lenses because nighttime is just like any other time, man, because you can't see shit if you get your headlights on. So my recommendation is always wear eye protection when you're riding your motorcycle, your buggy, or your ATV. And now here's another question for you. Let me pull one up, Kristen. Kristen, you want to answer a question? Sure, Steve. I ain't got one for you. Oh. <laughs> Nobody knew he was going to be on the show. I didn't know he was going to be on the show. Hey, Steve, love the show. I've been listening since the beginning. Thanks. I appreciate that. So my question is, when a guy botches moves constantly in the match, does it give you full permission to legitimately slap or punch the guy to wake him up and focus? Thanks. Rob Anderson from the U.K. Hey, Rob, thanks for the question. You know, it's funny. I was just watching a... Uh, a video on Perry Saturn and he was working with a guy Mike Bell way back in the day and Mike dropped him on his head a few times and Perry kind of went off and throttled him he apologized for it and owned up to it uh, but that was a case of a guy botching some moves and Perry kind of lost his temper and I hope Perry's doing well I know he's not in a, in a great place right now but I just saw the video on YouTube but, man, I tell you what, when a guy is out there and he, and he fucks up or he messes up, you know, it's one thing when you get a potato and you send a receipt back. But if a guy just continually botches stuff, it's time to go home. You know, I did it in a few matches when I was uh, early in my career uh, because I don't hear very well. I couldn't hear the guy's call, so I'd fuck up high spots and, and mess shit up. Not intentionally, and luckily I was working with, you know, very savvy, you know, veterans who were patient with me. And they weren't going to try to whip my ass because I was in pretty good shape. But it was time to go home, or they'd just get on all offense, and I would sell, and then we'd go home. But, no, it doesn't give you license. It doesn't give you uh, any permission to just throttle a guy. It's just that some guys aren't that great. Some guys are a little slow. Some guys never really pick it up. And so you just have to have the patience to deal with those people. They're going to come along at some point or time in your career, and we all deal with it. And, you know, back in the day when I was green, you know, I didn't necessarily hurt anybody, but you know, I was fucking some shit up, and it's just a learning process. But when a guy messes up, the best thing is to do is to be patient, try to settle him down. He could be nervous, grab a hold, say, hey, brother, you okay, and continue or go home, but go home in a business-like fashion. Nobody's out there in the squared circle to try to hurt the other guy. It's a cooperation thing, but fuck-ups do happen. When they do, remain calm. It does not give you liberty to trash the fuck out of them. But there have been many stories, and you have heard them just like I have, of guys losing their shit and throttling a guy. Go on to another question. What do you think about that, Kristen? Uh, what I took out of that is that you still don't hear. <laughs> what? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> well, Kristen, believe it or not, there's a question here for you. It comes from Dennis Carey from Winter Park, Florida. Now you really put me on the spot here, Steve. Oh, it's these ones. Hey, Steve, this time I have a question for your illustrious wife. He even spelled it right. Illustrious I or wife? <laughs> <laughs> Both of them. I recently went vegetarian, but I still eat eggs because what's a guy to do? So does she eat them gimmick foods like veggie bacon, veggie burgers, veggie sausage, and whatnot? Does she make you partake in these as well or maybe slip some broccoli inside a chicken breast when you're not looking? Love the show. Thanks. All right, Dennis. First question, uh... Kristen, do you eat veggie bacon, veggie burgers, veggie sausage, and whatnot? There are certain soy products that I do like, but some soy products that look like meat I don't like because I, like I don't like the looks of meat and I don't like the texture of it. So 
I've eaten uh, veggie burgers. I like veggie burgers as long as it's vegetables and not like weird stuff that makes it look like a real hamburger. Is that a soy product? Yeah, usually they're soy or you can get the one, you can get ve- actual vegetable burgers now. I like Whole Foods and stuff, but um, there are certain products like that I do like. I'll have a veggie sausage sometimes. Um, you like them giving some morning star. Yeah, but there's those... I've seen them. They make them look like chicken tenders and stuff like that. I, I don't. That no. just makes me. I don't yeah, like you don't that. like fake chicken tenders no. and shit like that. But you do look. You eat veggie burgers. You do like your veggie sausage. And I do make breakfast. spaghetti for you sometimes with my soy meat or my ground beef crumbly things that kind of look like. Um, but I'll admit that shit's as good as uh, spaghetti with beef. Yeah, you like it. And when, when he says whatnot, I, I'm assuming that he means like um, tofu. I do like tofu, but I recently read an article where they say soy products aren't great for you. So I was trying not to overdo it, but I do like tofu because it kind of takes on any flavor that you want it to when you're using it to cook. So, But I love vegetables. I, I just, you know, I, I could eat salad every day and vegetables every day. Well, here's a question for you, and this is for me because you'll eat egg whites, but you won't eat the egg yolks. Now, with me, I eat mostly egg whites, and then I'll put in like one or two yolks. What, why won't you eat the yolk? I don't know. I don't like the yolk, and I don't like the little white thing that attaches the yolk to the egg white, so I take that out, too. I know I'm, this is weird, but I just strictly like the egg white. The yolk is like a fetus or something to me. Come on. But I don't know. It just grosses me out. Jiminy H. Crick. <laughs> and he goes on to ask, does she make you partake in these as well? Well, no, no, because I eat everything. And sometimes, like she says, she'll make that vegetarian spaghetti sauce, and I'll eat some of that shit if I don't feel like hamburger or whatever. But I'll do, like, quinoa with veg- vegetables in there and things. You always eat it. You yeah, like some it. of the stuff she makes, I'll actually eat. Yeah. But for the most part, man, I'm, I'm a meter. I'm like a caveman or a T-Rex. Yeah, so. but you get tired of eating meat, too, though. Oh, man, well, today I've had three protein shakes mixed up in my blender. And i got to ask you a question, because here's the way I'm making these protein shakes. Dig this. I'll get two cups of almond milk or coconut milk, and then I'll put two scoops of protein. So you get about 45 calories a cup of the uh, coconut milk, so that's 90 calories. And then you've got 220 ca- calories in the protein, plus 60 grams of protein. Then I'll drop a banana in there, two tablespoons of MCT oil, and then, what else do I put in there? Oh, yogurt. then four ounces of uh, nonfat yogurt. So you're looking at Greek about six yogurt. to 700 calories. Jeez. And I've had three of those today because, for some reason, my illustrious wife <laughs> hasn't seen fit to cook those chicken breasts I got in there. And I've been trying to shit out a podcast all day because normally I cook all my food. Chris always cooks dinner. I cook my breakfast. And then uh, I just... We take turns during the day if I'm here. I'll make You've your... been here all day, you ain't cooked yet. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to call you out on the podcast. I've had a lot of work to do today. You have. I'm sorry. I'm okay. just kidding you. You know, I'm just ribbing you. Well, uh, Kristen's brother called a while ago, and he was talking to me about getting some hands made, and I said, I've been drinking protein shakes because my wife was too lazy to cook. I was kidding. I know you were. Okay. Will you cook me some chicken breast? <laughs> Uh, but th- I've, I've had three of those protein shakes because sometimes I'll get stuck on these podcasts and then I'll end up eating like two meals in one day. That's right. like a thousand calories. You can't yeah. get by on that. And I've been trying yeah. to jack my calories up to about, see, I think I'm up to about 3,500 to 3,700 because I ain't been eating enough. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? Because if I drink one of those shakes, I wouldn't be hungry for three days. <laughs> no, don't get me wrong. I'm going to be a barrel of fun to be around here in about a couple of hours. <laughs> If you know what I mean. But as far as her slipping broccoli and chicken breast or something like that, I eat broccoli to begin yeah, you with. Yeah, you do. You like it. I eat cauliflower. So I'll, I'll get my veggies in regardless. But, uh, yeah. I, and I, like I have it. made, like, you know, I flatten chicken breast and I'll roll with spinach and stuff. That's good. But I haven't made that in a long time. But there's plenty of uh, veggies you can sneak into into meats. What's your go-to vegetable? I, I know this sounds crazy, but I love lettuce. You're like a goddamn rabbit. <laughs> I love salad. I love lettuce. I love broccoli. I love any vegetable. The only two vegetables I do not like are mushrooms and eggplant. Boy, I'll tell you what. If there's one thing I can't stand is we go to a fucking restaurant, and my wife puts her order in, and she'll say no mushrooms or eggplant. And, all and I sudden, always say that because I don't like either. And all of a sudden, she gets her dish back, and sure enough, there's either some mushrooms in that sandwich or there's an eggplant. 
<laughs> it's like, did you not hear when she was placing that order? It goes back to that question a while ago. If a guy's not hearing eye spots, he's fucking shit up. So my wife's not going to throttle the person for bringing the eggplant and the mushroom in I just have to pick it all out. <laughs> well, I know, but sometimes they go remake it. So there I am with a plate of food, but i got to wait on your shit to come I back. Because it can't be rude and eat in front of you. So I eat behind you. <laughs> <laughs> Why does that guy eat behind his wife? Oh, they <laughs> fucked up her order. <laughs> hey, man, here's a question. Hey, uh, Steve, uh, I've been meaning to ask you this for a while, and it recently came up in the Adam Cole podcast. Had a good time talking to that guy. But unfortunately, you did not elaborate on it. Baltimore, 1998. Did Paul Bear really go into the sewer? You and Kane stuffed him head first down the manhole, and it looked pretty real. How was that done? I'm curious. I'll catch your ass down the road. Harvey from London, UK. God damn, I got a shit pile of fans over in the UK. Thank you, Harvey. I appreciate that question. No, man, that was a real deal. And, uh, you know, Paul was a pretty big guy. And that manhole was pretty damn deep. And what they did, somehow they stuffed, a, I think, a bunch of blankets and some pillows down there in that hole. And it was a pretty good drop off. And the thing about it was, it had to be, shit, at least six, it had to be at least six feet down there, six, seven, eight, because when Paul, when Paul went down there, if I'm not mistaken, he went head first, but then he had to rotate to take his bump. And, you know, Paul wasn't like just a bump taking heel because he was a big man. But, man, he was gung-ho to do it, and we did that in one take. I can't remember if that was live or if we did it as a pre-tape, but I think I had that shovel in my hand, and me and Kane, we were roughing him up pretty good, and Paul was game for it. Paul was game for anything. And Man, I love Paul ever since he was Percy Pringle, and I met him down in USWA, and we were just friends from the first time we met. But they had some uh, some blanket stuff down in there to cushion his fall, some pillows, and I was thinking at first when I was thinking about how did we do that? Because I, I was thinking, was there a mattress down there or what? But it was almost like a mattress by the got by the time they got finished padding it. And I got to give a shout out to Paul. I mean, he's no longer with us, but he was always game to do everything. But that was a shoot bump. It was done one time, and Paul didn't get hurt, and it was really great TV. And of course, I always like working with Kane. I just I read on the uh, computer. The cane was going to run for maybe mayor of Knoxville or wherever the hell he lives over in Tennessee. Kane's one of the smartest guys in the WWE. He's read about a thousand books, I figure. Actually, that's a number I'm just making up. But the guy's like a bookworm, and he's really, really smart. And when you see Kane or the demon Kane and all the savage, crazy stuff that he's done over the history of his career, and he's had a monster run, and he'll be in the Hall of Fame one day, Golly, what a gentle soul. A mountain of a man and smart as fuck. One of the smartest guys, most eloquent, well-spoken guys in the locker room. I'd love to talk to him on a podcast one of these days. But anyway, me and Kane, stuffing Paul Bearer down in that mando, that's how we did it. And Paul Bearer was badass. Steve Austin shaved head. Why does Steve Austin shave his head? What razor and shaving cream does Steve Austin use to shave his head? Matthew asks. Someone really wants to know that. Yeah, Matthew. Why does Steve Austin shave his head? Because the motherfucker's going bald. I started losing my hair, widow's peak, when I was 24, 25 years old down there in WCW. I saw the writing on the wall. Fuck. If I tried to grow my hair back right now, I'd look like an idiot. With all due respect that people are losing their hair and won't cut it, I would look stupid as fuck. So shaving my head, the fact that I was going bald, turned out to be the best thing that could have ever happened to me. Because of stunning Steve Austin, you know, back in my day when I first got into business, I was actually a pretty good looking cat with a decent physique. But when I turned into Stone Cold Steve Austin, that hair would have never worked. I cannot so, picture you with hair. <laughs> you've seen those pictures of me. I know, Every but now and then someone will tweet yeah. me one. It's not like I carry around a photo album of my career and say, <laughs> here's a picture of me when I was 26 and had a head full of long, blonde, beautiful hair. So uh, I shaved my head because I'm going bald. And so for all practical purposes, I am bald. But, and it works for you. Yeah, it works for me. But, man, sometimes, you know, like when we're in deer season or whatever, I won't shave for about a week, week and a half, and I'll start looking pretty shitty. 
uh, and then I'll always tell my wife, I said, I think I'm going to go ahead and grow my beard out again this year. <laughs> and my wife says, do you have to? You look so much better without your beard. You look so much more handsome when you're clean shaven. See? Yeah, good one. <laughs> She's over there rolling her eyes. <laughs> what razor and shaving cream do I use? Man, I, I like a twin blade razor. As far as shaving cream goes, any of it will work. I like that kind of, that gel is soothes this blue and then you rub it on your head, it turns white or whatever. So shaving cream is shaving cream. Half the time I run out down at the ranch and I'll just use soap and water. And my other trick is when I'm in a hotel sometimes, if there's they got those little gimmick conditioner bottles, I'll just squirt conditioner all over my head and on my face. As long as you got something slippery for some kind of lubrication, I, I don't let it sit on there long enough to soften the whiskers up, and that's all you use. But soap and water will work any old day in the week. That's an interesting question. <laughs> well, Chris, you shave your legs every goddamn day. Yeah. What do you use to shave your legs? Soap. Soap and water. Yeah. Here's the thing. And why your you leftover sh- razors. <laughs> why you got to shave your legs every single day? Is that is that normal for like most all of your friends? I don't like stubble. Well, I don't either. Well, there you go. Well, <laughs> can't get hot about it. Hey, what else are we going to talk about? Absolutely nothing, Steve. Hey, man. Uh, oh, there's the same question. When a guy botches a move, can you beat the fuck out of him? <laughs> no, you can't. Here's a Metallica question. You haven't been shy about your love for Metallica. Any thoughts on the new album, favorite tracks? And with you being on the road so often over the years, have you ever had a chance to see them live? Matt from Omaha, Nebraska. Hey, thanks for the email, Matt. Here's the thing. I ain't never seen Metallica in concert because I don't really like going to concerts. But my wife is a Metallica fanatic. I would, I would say fanatic. fanatic. Yeah. I've seen him a lot, uh, many times live. Probably six or eight. At least, yeah. At least. Yeah. But you also like to go see Tool. Tool, Pantera, Soulfly, Clutch. Uh, gosh, I can't even. <laughs> no, but those are the ones yeah. you've seen over and yeah. over and over again. Yeah. But I ain't never seen Metallica. I- I'm really intrigued uh, just by the history of the band. And I was watching the longevity some, of the band, the really. longevity yeah. of the band, the way they've kind of, you know, evolved over the years. And from man, that, that crash that killed what Cliff Burton, yeah, the original bass player. Yep. And, uh, just the way they kind of evolved as songwriters and the relationship between Hetfield and Lars Ulrich, and of course, Kirk Hammett. Yeah. And, you know, when they brought him on to play the guitar and then, you know, Dave Mustaine, you know, left yeah. to do Megadeth because the personality thing wasn't, wasn't really working. But all the members of the band, I just think that it's a fascinating story about how those guys were kind of like, well, they were revolutionary. But we haven't so, really listened to the new album. I've heard a couple of tracks on Sirius XM, but I really haven't listened to the whole I album. haven't heard anything off yeah. the new album, but uh, so it's something maybe I'll check out. But yeah. I, I've been really getting into a lot of their older stuff, and I've been listening to a lot of the stuff lately off the Kill 'Em All album. And here's one thing that I, you know, I didn't really know too much about, but I know that uh, uh, James Hetfield is actually into hunting. Oh. So it'd be neat to have a conversation, not so much to retrace their rock and roll roots because of, or their heavy metal or whatever you want to call it uh, roots because so many people have talked about their stories so many times, myself included. I don't really care to talk too much about it. I'd rather talk about other things. I'd like to sit down and shoot the breeze, just talk to a guy about hunting and cars because I know he digs both. But anyway, shit. Hey, Kristen, that's about an hour's worth of uh, conversation. I think we ought to take this podcast home I think I'll do my close and I'll do my open and there's a lot of shit I got to do and then I got to train shoulders in the backyard. And I'm going to Zumba. Kristen is going to Zumba today, you lucky rascal. <laughs> Kristen, thank you for picking me up on this podcast and helping a brother out. You are very welcome. Well, helping your husband out in this case. Wait, are you called a global icon and a national treasure? Yeah, giant. You can call giant. me, yeah. Okay. You just call me Steve-O. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, anytime you can hang out with a global icon and a national treasure, which I'm you honored. do 24-7, yeah, I'm honored. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, give me to go home. Q is time to wrap up his podcast and ride off in the sunset. I want to thank my wife for helping me out in short notice. And as far as something to watch, 
Yeah, you got to watch WrestleMania 33 this April 2nd, Sunday, 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 live from Orlando, Florida, on the WWE Network for $9.99 a month. Holy shit. Do not miss WrestleMania 33. I'm going to be doing a show about WrestleMania 33. I don't know who I'm doing it with, but I'm going to be talking about it. Hopefully all the guys and girls get off and have a great night inside the square circle. It's WrestleMania 33. Congratulations to all of the 2017 Hall of Fame inductees. I'm proud of y'all for busting your asses and uh, doing enough inside the square circle to go on to the Hall of Fame. Hell of a class going in this year, headlined by Kurt Angle and, of course, my real good friend, Diamond Dallas Page and everybody else. It's from the Rock and Roll Express. Jesus, it's about time these guys went in. So congrats to that whole damn class. Hey, ProWrestlingTees.com slash Steve Austin has all the shirts I've been wearing during the filming of the last season of Broken Skull Challenge. And the best damn IPA on the planet is Broken Skull IPA at El Segundo Brewing Company. You can get it at Whole Foods and Total Wines if you live in Cali. And if you don't live here, check inside the seller.com to see if they ship to your state. And don't forget about my website, BrokenSkullRants.com. They got everything Steve Austin related, including the cold steel Broken Skull Knife and the new working man knife you want a real cost effective badass sharp working knife check out the working man from cold steel knives at brokenskullranch.com hey you gotta say one more thank you to all the fine sponsors of the steve austin show that's how i'm able to do this podcast for you twice a week for free and you can find all my sponsors at podcastone.com just click on the killer deals button at the top of the page and then click on the steve austin show banner and just a reminder that the Steve Austin Show is also a participant in the Amazon Associates Program, an affiliate advertising program designed to provide a means for me to earn fees by linking to Amazon.com. You can link to Amazon at PodcastOne.com by clicking on the Killer Deals button at the top of the page. Hey, folks, keep listening. The 60-second AP News headlines are coming up next. Until then, my name is Steve Austin, and I will catch your ass down the road. Download new episodes of Steve Austin Unleashed every Thursday at PodcastOne.com. That's podcastone.com.